Good morning and welcome to Sunday Worship at St. Stephen's Episcopal Church in San Luis Obispo, California. If you're joining us for the first time, welcome. Whoever you are and wherever you are in your spiritual journey and wherever you are in the world, St. Stephen's welcomes you. And we begin our service. Oh, I just want to let you know that Pastor Karen Siegfried will be preaching for us today. So we welcome her to our Sunday worship. We start our worship with sing praise to God who reigns above. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, in Christ you have revealed your glory among the nations. Preserve the works of your mercy that your church throughout the world may per persevere with steadfast faith in the confession of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Moses said to the Lord, See, you have said to me, Bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send to me, send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. Now, if I have found favor in your sight, show me your ways, so that I may know you and find favor in your sight. Consider, too, that this nation is your people, he said. My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. And he said to them, If your presence will not go, do not carry us up from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight, I and your people, unless you go with us? In this way we shall be distinct, I and your people, from every people on the face of the earth. The Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing that you have asked. For you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. Moses said, Show me your glory, I pray. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and I will proclaim before you the name, The Lord. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. But, he said, you cannot see my face, for no one shall stand on the rock. And while my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft on the rock, and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the Church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers 
constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters beloved by God, that he has chosen you because our message of the gospel came to you, not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. Just as you know what kind of persons we prove to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord. For in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy inspired by the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of those regions report about us, what kind of welcome we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said, so they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
from our opening collect. Almighty God, preserve the works of your mercy, that your church throughout the world may persevere with steadfast faith. Amen. Mercy. Mercy is something that is in short supply today. Mercy is simply showing compassion and forgiveness towards someone whom it is within your power to punish or harm. Mercy is an act of kindness that springs forth from a heart of generosity. And it comes from the French word merci, which means thank you. In Hebrew, mercy encompasses all the acts of loving kindness, steadfast love, and forgiveness. And it is this subject of mercy that I want to speak to in my sermon today. Now I want you to pause for just a moment and try to remember the covenant that you or your parents made when first married. To love, comfort, honor one another, forsaking all others and being faithful as long as you both shall live. Then imagine your spouse or one of your parents being unfaithful and breaking that marriage covenant. How do you think you'd feel? What about all the pain? Would you be able to forgive? Would you have mercy on your partner? Would you hold resentments for the rest of your life? Or would you seek after a divorce? This is the dilemma that God struggles with in today's lesson from the book of Exodus. The people of Israel have broken their covenant with God by worshiping a golden calf. Now, as you might remember, the covenant contained 10 commandments, the first two of which I think you know. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt you shall have no other gods before me, number one. And number two, you shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on earth below or in the waters. So early on their journey, the Israelites now have two strikes against them. In today's reading, which is post-calf, meaning after they worship the golden calf, Moses begs God not to abandon the people of Israel because of their unfaithfulness. And after a period of bargaining going back and forth, God tells Moses, okay, I will make all my goodness pass before you. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. The people of Israel then resume their journey to the promised land, supported and upheld by God's presence and mercy. Now embracing a posture of mercy is not something that comes naturally to most of us because we're not biologically wired for it. Instead, we are hardwired for fight or flight, to give tit for tat, to look out for number one first and foremost, and we often get wary of those who screw up and do not do their part. We have a tendency to hold on to old hurts, justifying our anger and refusing to let go. We prefer being right over being lo loving. And in summary, we prefer retributive justice to mercy. And yet, if God's mercy is always a little bit greater than God's justice, shouldn't we too take on the mantle of mercy? I remember when I was shown mercy by a complete stranger. I was going to school full time and my resources were scarce. And I wanted to go to the grocery store and stock up. And so I asked my roommate if I could borrow her car. So I went to the store and then while I was backing up the car, going home, <laughs> I hit the car next to me in the parking lot. It went thump. 
and as I turned to look, there was a dent in the rear quarter panel. Well, my heart started beating and I became fearful because I remembered that my roommate hadn't paid her car insurance. So I put my number on a piece of paper and I wrote, I hit your car and I placed it on the windshield of the dented car. And then I returned home and I waited. I had been brought up in a culture which counted, measured, judged, and punished those who offended. So when the call came, I held my breath and waited for my sentence. Was he going to yell at me? Would he demand immediate payment? Would he negotiate perhaps a monthly payment plan? To my surprise, the owner was unaware of the damage to his car. And so when I explained the situation, he told me to hold on, and then he went into the garage to look at his car. When he returned to the phone, he simply said, don't worry about it. It's not that bad. Mercy. Mercy can wipe away a debt that is owed, giving the offender a second chance to thrive. Ten years later, while sitting in my car in a school parking lot, I heard a thump as my car shook. I looked in the rear view mirror and noticed a car had hit my rear bumper. As I got out of the car to review the damage, I saw a harried father who had just dropped his child off to school. He was shaking his head and he was looking forlorn. I looked at my bumper and then I looked at the father and I said, don't worry, it's not that bad. You see, mercy begets mercy. Mercy kicks into the universe a new trajectory that brings light into the darkness. A little bit of mercy makes the world less cold and more just. And so we pray, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespassed against us. Embracing acts of compassion is another aspect of mercy. When we come face to face with our own suffering and we have compassion for ourselves, it becomes easier to have mercy on others who are in pain. For example, Enzo Malacra, who is an Italian diver, was swimming next to his boat in the Sea of Syracuse when he felt something slightly hit the back of his neck. He turned and saw a dolphin who was trying to express something. And the next thing he knew, the dolphin began to dive down, and so Enzo went after the dolphin. And he looked down, and at about 12 meters deep, there was another dolphin who was caught in a net that had been abandoned. So Enzo surfaced immediately, got his daughter, got a couple of diving knives, and returned. And soon, the two of them managed to free the dolphin who almost issued a human cry at the end of the ordeal. You see, 10 minutes more, the dolphin would have been dead from lack of oxygen. So they released the dolphin and brought it to the surface. And then there was a surprise. They noticed that the dolphin was pregnant. The male dolphin circled them and then stopped in front of Enzo touched his cheek with a kiss and a gesture of gratitude. Then both of the dolphins swam off. Acts of mercy offer a chance for new life and new possibilities. I recently read a story in the Washington Post of electrician John Kinney, who responded to a call when Gloria Scott flipped her switch in the kitchen. And all of a sudden, all these sparks came out of the overhead fixture. And so she knows she needed to call a, a um, electrician. 
Her house was in total disrepair. And so after fixing the problem and getting her lights to work, Kinney returned home. However, he could not stop thinking about Gloria and her dilapidated home. It made him sad to think about her sitting alone in that house that needed so many repairs. And so the following Monday, he returned to Gloria's home with an offer. And he said, look, I have lots of friends. How about if I got a group to come over and help you fi fix things up around here? It will be no cost to yourself. Gloria was in disbelief but she was filled with joy. And after she agreed with the offer, Kinney posted a GoFundMe page. And in less than a month, he collected $115,000. His construction buddies stepped up to the plate. And these volunteers who came to his aid became known as Gloria's Gladiators. Today, this movement of generosity and outreach has extended across the country. Mercy now has a new name, and it's called Gloria's Gladiators. People from coast to coast who post their own chain reaction volunteer efforts, which now has more than 15,000 members. These folks are performing acts of mercy through supporting those who have little in their lives. You see, mercy begets mercy and kicks into the universe a new life-giving trajectory. A little bit of mercy makes the world less cold and more just. Mercy is a blessing, not only on those to whom it is bestowed, but it is a blessing for those who offer it freely. In fact, when you think about it, mercy and forgiveness are the whole gospel. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Mercy describes the ministry shown by Mother Teresa and her help by the Sisters of Mercy who perform incredible acts of service to the poor and the destitute. That order of nuns is now worldwide. Mercy touched the heart of Nelson Mandela, who after 27 years in prison, showed forgiveness towards the people who held him prisoner. In fact, his leadership led to the formation of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission that has helped South African people peacefully come to terms with their troubled past of apartheid. Mercy includes the forgiveness bestowed on those who had lost family members when Dylan Roof walked into Emmanuel African Methodist Episcopal Church in South Carolina and opened fired and murdered nine people. Because of this remarkable posture of forgiveness from some of the members of the church, this church who once struggled to fill its pews is now overflowing with folks who want to witness and touch the hem of mercy's garment. Mercy is one of the defining characteristics of God. Mercy includes clemency, benevolence, pity, forbearance, compassion, forgiveness, and the giving of alms and service. It includes missions of mercy to the hungry, the poor, the prisoner, and those who are suffering in body and mind. Mercy gives hope to those who receive it, and frees us from past mistakes. And while there is often little we can do on a global scale to affect the current chaos and pain in our world, we always have the power to stretch out our arms of mercy and bestow compassion on those within our reach. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, 
Lord have mercy. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We pray to Jesus who is present with us to eternity. Jesus, light of the world, we pray for this gathering this morning. In our diocese, we pray for Bishop Lucinda, for Father Ian and Pastor Karen, for all who work for ministries focusing on immigration rights and racial justice, for our partner parish of Winchcombe in the Diocese of Gloucester. Help us to bring the light and peace of your gospel to the nations. Blessed are those who come in the name of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus, bread of life, we come to feed on your word and sacrament. We remember those who produce and prepare our food. Help us to be your hands and feet who give food to the hungry and nourish us all with your word. Blessed are those who come in the name of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus, our way, our truth, our life, we remember those who are engaged in serving the children of God who are less fortunate than we are, especially those agencies with whom we work and all relief agencies. Be with us and all who follow you in the way. Deepen our appreciation of your truth and fill us with your life. Blessed are those who come in the name of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus, good shepherd who gave your life for the sheep, we pray for those in our own congregation and loved ones on the front lines, for Bettina, Brad, Chris, Christopher, Clark, Grace, Jason Robert, Jim, Carl, Kate, Michael, Patrick, and Robin. We remember those who are alone, injured, and sick, and those who have asked for our prayers. For Dixie, Elizabeth and Joe, David Hafemeister, Sophia, Ogo, Ngozi, and Joseph. For John's foot recovery. For West, Brenna, Lizzie and the Smith family who have been evacuated from the Mullen fire in Wyoming, for the continued suffering our country and the world is enduring with the pandemic, for peace among the protesters and rioters, and that justice for all can be achieved, 
those affected by the wildfires here in California and across the Western United States. We remember those who are close to us, whom we now name, either silently or aloud. We remember those who are victims of fear and oppression, war and famine, violence and injustice. Help us to lead those in need to new pastors. Blessed are they who come in the name of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus, the resurrection and the life, we give you thanks for all who have lived and believed in you, remembering the families and friends of the over 210,000 Americans who have lost their lives to COVID-19 and the dozens of wildfire victims and those who are close to us, whom we now name either silently or aloud. Betty Kramer, Robert Cole Jr. Blessed are those who come in the name of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us and accept our prayers and be with us always. Amen. God has made us one in Christ. God has set his seal upon us and as a pledge of what is to come, has given the spirit to dwell in our hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And peace to those who are in the building with me. Peace to you, Grady and Janice and Stephanie, our technician today. Just two quick announcements. Um, uh, there's one thing that I need to um, play from my phone, I think. Uh, I'm going to give you one more opportunity to um, leave messages on my voicemail for names for all souls. So if you would like to call my, my cell phone today and leave a message with just the names, um, uh, they will be incorporated into the All Souls Day service on November 2nd, Monday, November, November 2nd at 1215. We have our annual giving campaign going right now, and um, Rosie is going to say a few words about that. And unfortunately, I forgot to move it to this tablet here, but I can play it for you from my phone. Do, 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 do. Hopefully. Many of you know that I'm a fundraiser by profession. That's not so very loud. ask if I would work on stewardship for St. Stephen's. Many of you know that I'm a fundraiser by profession. So when asked if I would work on stewardship for St. Stephen's, I said I couldn't ethically fundraise for a second organization, but I could help in other ways. In my opinion, you can't be a professional fundraiser for an organization unless you have a passion for that organization. I have a passion for the organization I work for. Passion, that is the key. You give to what your passion is. Your highest giving should be where you have the highest passion. In Skip, in my case, the highest passion and highest giving is St. Stephen's. It's not only what we get from St. Stephen's, but what we want to give in many ways. Our time, our talent, and our treasures. When financial planners look at our income level and our level of giving, They are surprised that we donate to as many organizations as we do and give as much as we do. But that's an example from my parents. My parents came from very humble means, but I remember the giving they did. Their church was first. My mother was extremely kind. We lived next to a state highway, and rumor has it that the bums, as they called them back then, knew to stop by our house because my mother would always give them a meal, no questions asked. 
I remember watching my parents count out the pennies to buy things and my mother saving dimes in her church bank to buy needed household items like a lamp. Yet, they gave to their church because it was so important to them. Where is your passion? And what is St. Stephen's giving back to you? Please make St. Stephen's one of your highest priorities. Thank you very much, Rosie, for that message. And uh, the annual giving campaign has started. Um, the, you should have received your envelope and letter and, um, and pledge card in the mail earlier this week. Um, it was really interesting because in my calendar for a month has been on October 15th, um, annual giving campaign kickoff, because that was their target date. I went to my mailbox on October 15th, and there was the letter. So thank you to the annual giving campaign team, which is headed by Katie, our treasurer, and helped out by Carolyn Platt and Rosie Parks. And thank you for the message, Rosie. We'll have another message next week. <clears throat> Birthdays this week. Um, we don't have any. Is that correct? Uh, let's, let's pray for Jack. Watch over your child, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide him wherever he may be. Strengthen him when he stands. Comfort him when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise him up if he falls. And in his heart may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of his life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. All thanks and praise are your, yours at all times and in all places, our true and loving God, through Jesus Christ, your eternal word, the wisdom from on high, whom you created all, through whom you created all things. You laid the foundation of the world and enclosed the sea when it burst out from the tomb. You brought forth all creatures of the earth and gave, gave breath to humankind. Wondrous are you, Holy One of Blessing. All you create is a sign of hope for our journey. And so, as the morning stars sing your praises, we join the heavenly beings and all creation as we shout with joy.
Glory and honor are yours, Holy One of God, creator of all. Your word has never been silent. You called a people to yourself as a light to the nations. You delivered them from bondage and led them to a land of promise. Of your grace, you, have, you gave Jesus to be human, to share our life, to proclaim the coming of your holy reign, and to give himself for us a fragrant offering. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, you have freed us from sin, brought us into your life, reconciled us to you, and restored us to the glory you intend for us. We thank you that on the night before he died, for us, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body, broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends, and said, Drink this, all of you. This cup is a new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so, remembering all that was done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection, and the ascension, longing for Christ's coming in glory, and presenting to you the gifts of your earth that earth has formed and human hands have made, we acclaim you, O Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Christ Jesus, come in glory. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be the body and blood of your Christ. Grant that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and love. Giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ, and in the fullness of time, gather us with St. Stephen, Mary, the mother of Jesus, and all your people into the joy of our e true eternal home. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, our God and Creator, in voices of unending praise. Blessed are you forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. This is the true bread which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. A spiritual communion is a personal devotional that anyone can pray at any time to express their desire to receive Holy Communion at that moment, but in which circumstances impede them from actually receiving the sacrament. So let us pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. 
since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Shepherd and guardian of our souls, renew our faith, increase our hope, and strengthen our love. Teach us to hunger for Christ, who is the true and living bread, and to live by every word that comes from your mouth. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Live without fear. Your creator has made you holy, has always protected you, and loves you as a mother. Go in peace to follow the good road, and may God's blessing be with us always. Amen.
Alleluia. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia.